Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about the purge. They want gamers purged, and especially certain kinds of gamers, they want purged. And man, things really escalated pretty damn quick. With yeah. I, you said about certain types of gamers. The problem is even the ones that they would claim would be like what they want, they're mad at them too if they don't side with them. But yeah, it did. It went from zero to crazy, much like these people <laughs> know, right? in like seconds. I don't understand. We had uh, we had a situation last year that I thought was the end of a lot of this kind of drama with Hogwarts Legacy, and then uh, I don't know what happened. Like, I know oh. what happened. What happened is the views are down. These blogs need hits, yep. so they've been trying to artificially generate GamerGate 2.0 for a couple years now. And they finally got what they wanted, which we've been calling, and they finally found something that they can catalyst enough to, but they're trying to leverage bigotry with Hogwarts Legacy. Well, now they're trying, they got more to leverage bigotry on. And since most people, the normies are gonna side with JK Rowling and stuff like that because they don't know there's an issue or whatever. This one they can leverage, they're not gonna have as much pushback from nor people who, who wouldn't know. You know what I mean? But but now is not the time to do it. The, no, the, the video just don't buy their games and they're in a, they're in a fold. The video game industry is collapsing. AAA gaming is collapsing, and all these blogs are shutting down. And now everyone's like, yeah, you know those the gamers that are left. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, call them names and and uh, write hit pieces on them. Right, because that's uh, going to work so well for you. I mean, they're even trying to can cancel Asmund Gold for the 50th time now. It's like, what the hell? I don't think it's going to work. I think what's going to happen is one of these idiots is going to write something stupid on a blog and their corporate owners are going to shut the blog down. I'm, I'm, my money's on Kotaku. Oh, absolutely. Because um, they just barely squeaked by last time. And this is why you should not have walked back the game guide mandate. Because <laughs> they're going to dead spin you. I'm just telling you uh, straight up. They're going to dead spin. Oh, I can't. I can guarantee you they are looking for a buyer right I now. I bet you are completely right. Uh, because I think they know they're going to get dead spin because these people aren't stopping. No, they're not. And it's like this. You want you want a good case study and why you don't hire activists to work for your company. You just look at what is going on with gaming. Look at what's going on to a lesser extent in comics. These people, to them, the platform is worth more than the product. Their opinions are worth more than the company's bottom line. And what they do is they basically torch any goodwill that that uh, your company has and then everybody's out of work it's not just them they don't care if they're out of work they got to but, you know, yeah but that's them this person we're gonna talk about first though this is their own thing they're the ceo of their own company and yeah like, see the difference if it's your own indie company okay you can do what you want if you're doing triple a game not so much but these people are just like lighting themselves on fire for no good reason just to be like i'm sticking it to you and then they're getting their asses kicked yeah, let's let's talk about this. Before you get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get woohoo if you do. Uh, we are not covering the daily drama with gaming. It, it really is escalating at a, a very shocking pace. What's but funny to me is we called this for a long time. I said this was going to happen. We yeah, did. We did. Uh, I, I, I honestly thought the circumstances would be different, and I thought maybe we got a reprieve. Maybe people pushed back with Hogwarts Legacy, and that was it. That was going to be the end of it, and they would oh, mind no. their manners because there's the money's running out, and they're like, yeah, we have That's literally it. have the money's running out. nothing to lose. We have nothing to lose now. What's worse can happen? Oh, I don't get to keep my, my job in gaming journalism? Well, there's not going to be any jobs left, so fuck all you people fuck you bigots i'm out of here both middle fingers straight up that's what they're doing mm -hmm. and, but they're taking other people with them yeah who don't want to go along for the ride <laughs> so so yeah this was this was posted uh yesterday and this person i guess uh, they protected their tweets they protected their the company tweets too because they thought you know oh everything's on fire around me what's the 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 best way to burn myself down. I know. Let's go throw kerosene on the fire. Just wait until I notice that none of our starting char characters in our alpha build are white males. None out of six. I don't think anybody cares. N no one. No, they didn't. And I think thought, oh, I'm going to get people to come, you know, support me, and end up having to private their their posts because it, they didn't get. You threw kerosene on a fire. You got what you you you, you deserved because that was what was going to happen. Yeah, it's like, hey, bigots, hey, bigots over here, bigots, look at it. 
So I don't know who she thinks she's impressing with this, like other game journos that are about to be out of work, other developers that are about to be out of work. And again, if it's your own thing, whatever. You know what other what other uh, piece of media didn't have any white male characters at all in the entire show, the entire run would, would be Avatar, The Last Airbender. Right. Well, there's a whole bunch of games that didn't either, but here we are. And someone said that she was bragging about her, it was making her follower count go up. But then she locked her... Her, her privated her tweets. Uh, Grum says it's what the Haven play test. Uh, it's full of uh, microaggressions. I mean, transactions. Uh, this person here, friend says dead or alive beach volleyball had no white men. Yeah. Actually the majority of, of uh, uh, Japanese games, <laughs> a lot of them don't have white men and that's okay. That's totally fine. You know, oh, wait, well, this is interesting. He said, I gathered it was a marketing ploy and refrained from tweeting about it until she deleted it. The backfire was fully enforced by that. Anyone notice her studio is all male and white? Oh, so all her employees are male and white. Apparently they're just not represented. I don't they want to see themselves in your games there, I- Irina? Um, Unleashedgames.com. So but yeah. all you did was put yourself on a, a, a list of games who aren't going to buy now. Yeah. I For- mean, that's all you did. It wasn't really smart. Uh, former game dev for Blizzard 38 Studios, Warner Brothers, Scopely, um, United States Air Force, though. There you go. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That's a really dumb thing to to put out there in this climate. But everybody's trying to fist bump now. They're trying to show you that they're one of the good guys. They're on the right side of history. But it's just funny to me because all you did was just, you know, cause yourself trouble. You didn't need. No. Like, I, I don't even understand. That's the thing. We've had games like this. We've had cartoons like this. We've had movies like this where you, unless you call attention to it, people don't even think about it. But when you call attention to it, then it's like, oh, okay. I think that's what she was trying to do, but I, I think it just backfired spectacularly. It's like she tried to throw kerosene, but the end of the kerosene caught on fire and came back into the can and blew up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about, let's talk about, this is um, BBC gaming presenter Jules Hardy. Uh, calling for current Sweet Baby Inc. discourse to end with a final purge. And how are you supposed to do that? A final purge, the final countdown. And I think they got this from Grums as well, who's been uh, following this every day. Why are they all this way? Yep. Oh, no, he actually got from Bounding in the Comics. That's what I don't yeah. understand. Like, purge what? You purge, can't purge toxic gamers. Out of gaming. You can't do it. I'm sorry. So she was but on with Will Wheaton. That's all I need to know. Oh my God! Yeah, with Will Wheaton on Top Gear, the Shut game, up, the Jules. Top Gear gaming show. Uh, retweeting a now deleted post from user Becky something 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 in which oh, they a bunch of numbers it doesn't sound at all fake. Oh my God! Uh, so this is this is going this is going through the whole history of of uh, Sweet Baby Inc. and everything that's going on with that. And there are like ten thousand freaking YouTube videos on Sweet Baby Yank. So I don't think we have to uh, reiterate that. Basically, it's just a a uh, consultancy, you know. Okay, so the black girl gamers were upset because they said that people were equating Sweet Baby Inc. with them because they saw black and consulting and decided they worked together. That, you know, doesn't mean that. that I mean, if they did anything to do with it, then they did anything to do with it. That is kind of crap. But ironically, um, I saw people on Twitter who are are not white who are blocked by black girl gamers. Um, I am not. <laughs> I am very pale. But I was not I was not um, bl- blocked by them. So there, what, what she's basically calling for is is round two of this being Gamergate to be the final purge of these kinds of and games. And how are you going to do that, Jules? You can't <laughs> kick people off gaming just because you don't like what they have to say. It's not going to work that way. But what I can tell you is going to work that way is people are going to find out who's causing this and they're going to not buy their products till they starve them out with no, no money, you know? Yeah, well, that's what's going to happen. So I think, I think we basically have a small minority of uh, social activists, uh, social justice warriors, I guess, if you want to use the old uh, pejorative term, uh, working in the game industry that probably constitute a, a relatively small percentage, making it miserable for everybody else, just kind of like we saw in comics too. So they're kind of trying to police the industry. Now, my understanding is that back channel, there are uh, there's a lot of chatter from people that actually just want to make games and not virtue signal. And they want to make good games and they want to sell as many games as possible to as many people as possible. But they're afraid of these people. Well, here, yeah, that's the thing. You, 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 if you let them have that power, they're going to take advantage of it. I just think it's funny, though. Um, the final purge of uh, detox purge. of these dudes. 
These you, dudes. You do know, Jules, that there are a lot of girls that um, agree with, quote unquote, those dudes. And um, a lot of them aren't white women. Uh, you are, last I looked, very, very white. Um, uh, I'm just telling you, it's not all men. And that's you're you're being insulting to diverse women and women in general by basically equating them all to to dudes, white dudes, probably. And you're just you're just double marginalizing them. So good job there, Jules. I just I don't. Yeah, there you go. Tiny clap. I, I just don't understand what you it's hope. The plus she's gotten. I don't I don't understand what you hope to accomplish. You You basically want to. Take the hurting gaming industry and shrink it down even more and make sure that uh, what is probably your largest demographic um, to make sure that they don't ever touch a game that anybody that's involved in this works on. Oh, trust I mean, me. They don't want to touch those games. They, that, that's what started this. They had a list of games they didn't want to buy. That if you try, if you 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 go down to that. Now I'm not going to say there wasn't some racist bullshit on those pages because there were. I you know there were. It's the internet. But, There's racist bullshit all over the place. You boil yeah. it down. Somebody started a curated list of things. Yeah, that Sweet it was, Baby it was, Inc. did. That they, here's a list. If you don't want to buy Sweet Baby Inc. involved games, here's a list. That's what it boils down to. It just boils down to vote with your wallet. And then they got pissed and then started this whole thing because they know. That if that happens, they're in trouble. So they're trying to bully the media and everybody else to try to eliminate these people, which I don't understand how you can eliminate them. That's the weirdest darn thing. There are over 300,000 people that that uh, subscribe to Cabrutus's page and they've tried to cancel him. And, you know, anytime you do this, anytime you try to cancel somebody like this, chances are it's, it's going to boomerang, especially again. Right now is the worst possible time. You've got people getting laid off. You've got games getting canceled, studios getting shut down, and now you're going to tell gamers to go fuck themselves. You know, it's just not, you, you could have just said, well, if you don't like our games, whatever, but because they made such a big deal out of it, like, no, you're not allowed to not like our games. You're not allowed to keep score. Uh, and, and we're going to, it's like, yeah, you have you, to buy it because you're a bigot. Otherwise you have to buy it because you're a bigot. This, this didn't work in 2014, didn't work in 2016, didn't work in 2017. It sure as hell is not going to work. Now, when there's a lot less money and people, not, people are used to it. People are like, they're like, you're kind of big and oh, well, fuck you. Yeah. I'll they, step over you and keep going. Well, it's like when we first started the channel and we were always afraid that like. I wasn't. We weren't afraid. Well, we, we there was a lot of crap on both sides at the time. We were like, you know what? This is just getting out of hand all the way around. But, but one went way farther. We didn't want to say much at first because it was like, well, we don't want to be one of the oh, bad no, guys. Oh, no. I know why we didn't want to say much at first because we were still doing stuff for Disney at the yeah. time. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's why we didn't want to say that was That first. was the whole. Yeah, that's actually the truth. Why. <laughs> the, the, the reason that we used the uh, cartoon avatars and the fake names is that we actually were doing work for Disney. Uh, while well, well, shitting on Disney, <laughs> but we're working uh, with them. But that was awkward. So yeah, Clownfish TV was already going for like two years and, and they actually invited and paid for us to go to Celebration mm -hmm. to for Star Wars. That was kind of interesting. But That uh, was back before I thought, I mean, well, The Last Jedi happened and we're like, it can't get much worse. <laughs> we're like, well, Here we was wrong. Here we go, guys. Now get excited about the next Star Wars thing. It's like, yay. <laughs> I guess like you're nerds. You're supposed to love it. And it's like, eh. anyway, um, anyway. Yeah. So it's, it's not going to go well. It's not going to end well. I think what's going to happen and what they're going to do to shake these people off is they're basically, I, I believe the, the gaming industry as a whole is going to shrink. And it's just like comics and it'll just be like, Oh, whoopsie doopsie. We're not bigots. We just don't have enough work for you. Well, that's just um, it. And the thing is, Especially like independent people, like if they're out there putting these posts up and then, you know, for, for, you know, high fives, that's great. Tell people don't buy your games. Let the market decide. And put that's your what's going to happen. The put your game out there. The market's going to correct itself and it's going to decide. And if you are out there doing this kind of crap, and it's okay. Like, look, no one's saying you can't have games that, that are diverse. No one's saying that at all. The difference is there are games that are organically diverse and there are games that you're out, what you're making, and then you're out there saying, oh, we don't want white people here because of microaggressions. Um, yeah, that was... that's the That's the difference. Like... You can have a game that doesn't have, you know, white guys in it. It's happened a lot. It's not a big deal. But you don't go out there and be like, neither, neither. There's no white men in our, you know, hoo, hoo, hoo. what did you think was going to fucking happen? Especially in this, this climate with all the crap going on. And you deliberately went out there to throw kerosene on the fire and the fire, you know, came back on you and caused you a bunch of shit. But that's your own damn fault because you went out there deliberately trying to throw kerosene on it, thinking it was going to get you something. 
and it got you third degree burns in a hospital visit. It's not. It's not twenty. In the ambulance. The ambulance. It's. It's not 2016, 2017 anymore. These people are going to learn the hard way that, and it's yeah, same with Hollywood too. What's going on with Hollywood is they're basically using the uh, financial situation as an excuse to kill projects that they know aren't going to make money. It's going to be the same way here. Oh, we don't have money to hire Sweet Baby Inc. anymore. We're not doing AAA titles anymore. We don't need to hire consultants anymore. Oh, we can't green light your uh, weird Tumblr dating app, you know, because yeah, I mean, nobody's going to buy it. It's a, yeah, it's, I mean, it's not that hard. The market will decide. And if you're making a good game and you're not out there spouting off about this kind of stuff, you should be fine. It's when you're making games and you're out there you know, trying to leverage this, you know, stuff out there trying to cause trouble that you're going to find problems for yourself. I 100% agree that Kotaku is going to get gone. They're it's going to blow itself up. They're going to get because they're, 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 yeah. they're pushing for it. And it, but boy, isn't it weird that like all of the websites associated with that group, associated with Gawker, they all kind of end the same way, you know? Mm-hmm. And I, Kotaku definitely, I am really surprised that uh, Troy Levitt, the lead on Hogwarts Legacy, didn't take action against them. But they're apparently, uh, my understanding is that they're gathering information right now and they're going to do more hit pieces on YouTubers. Of course and, they are, that's all they can do. Instead yeah. of doing what they're supposed to do on Kotaku, which would be probably what mostly was people go there for is gaming guides or actual gaming news, they're going to keep doing this because they're personally involved. They're personally offended. They want to learn you. And all they're doing is making more people leave the site. It's like you guys, you guys are just you guys are just throwing kerosene on these gaming companies on the site on everything. You are yourselves burning the shit down. Good so, job. So they're trying they're trying to cancel Asmund Gold now again. You said he's been canceled like three hundred times now. He doesn't even give a shit anymore, uh, which I think is pretty funny. But he was talking about the situation. He was talking about this Irina uh, Pereira, uh-huh. CEO and founder of Unleashed Games. He said, yeah, I mean, like, obviously this is a mental disorder, right? I mean, like, this is a person that probably should have mattresses on their walls. <laughs> and so it makes sense that a person like this was going to have a stupid opinion on it the Internet. really dumb. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just like, it's really stupid. To, but we have seen this on a smaller scale in comics. It's just like, oh, guess what, everybody? Everybody in this book, yeah, there's not a single straight person in my my LGBTQ plus superhero fantasy. It's like, okay, well, we didn't really expect uh, there to be, nor do we give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> nor are we gonna buy it because it's not. I mean, this is like the this is like the people complaining, or the uh, director complaining about uh, what was it, Bros, the the gay rom com. Like, you do realize that statistically, there are only gonna be so many people that are interested in going to your gay rom com. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. that's just, this is just kind of how it is. It's not saying there's anything wrong with that, but we're just saying it appeals to a very small demographic, just like the, the Tumblr dating Sims and the. Right. And so you can't get mad when right. they're not all on there. But at the same time, like I said, if it was because it was an independent company, if you're an independent company making these really, you know, niched games, that's cool. You can do what you can do. You it's your game company. You do what you want to do. That's not the problem. The problem is when you go on to Twitter and then you're deliberately just trying to poke the bear for, you know, attention. And then the bear hits back and then you start screaming about it. Yeah, he really, man, he really went at her. Um, he was talking about how he grew up in an environment full of individuals with diverse backgrounds. So did, you. So did I. Yeah. I, I spent most of uh, about half my childhood in California and, uh, you know, we had a pretty diverse uh, family makeup out there. But he said, yeah, he said a lot of these people fetishize minority groups. It's usually white people. I mean, let's be honest. It's usually white dudes or white women. White women, white women especially are like 95% of the time if somebody's saying something stupid about and it's just like over the top. It's like, oh, it's a white woman. Of course, of course it is. Of course it is. And he said, uh, I feel really bad for these people. I do because like I was so lucky to grow up mm-hmm. in a place I did and have such a multicultural, multiracial friend group. I, I did too, actually, in California. Um, I only had two of my friends out there were white kids, but most of my friends were actually Korean. And yes. So uh, they were like that was but that was just by happenstance because we had a lot of the same classes together. But uh, I was a dork. I was in uh, academic decathlon for economics. And and uh, yeah. Anyway, I still love you. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, anyway, I see these freaks that probably grew up in these like upper middle class, you know, like homogenous cultures. Yeah. And they fetishize different minorities because they don't know how to treat them like people because they never really interact with them. Um, that's true. It's almost like it's almost like they want to give the appearance of being progressive, of being cultured, of being. But it's like you can you can tell they obviously don't know what the f- they're talking about. 
Because if you actually talk to people from these these backgrounds, well, like La Tinker Bell, that's a damn good oh, kiss. Oh yeah, that makes me. Like mad. you actually you actually ask uh, somebody who's Latino about that, and there you're probably going to get quite the either uh, a blank stare, confusion, like what what the fuck does that even mean, or anger because they're like, yeah, they're, our language Watch is for gender. Flying sandals. Yeah. Uh, you know, but it's just like, yeah, it's a lot of people get pissed off about this. Yeah. This guy, he grew up in uh, Austin, Texas and uh, working. Yeah. He had Mexican black friends, yeah. Muslim friends. And yeah. Uh, Austin's pretty, pretty diverse. I was uh, about a stone's throw from San Francisco and uh, yeah, I had friends across the board and I really truly didn't think anything of it. And actually it was weird when I moved back to Pennsylvania, I was like, God, there's so many white people here. Yeah, there are. I know when I was a kid, um, no, I was from a place that was predominantly white. I'm not going to say I wasn't. It was. There was a lot. There was diversity here, but not a lot. Um, however, I was lucky enough that I traveled a lot. And we had a lot of kids visit from other countries. Um, and we had them stay at our house often. And so I was always around different people all the time. And, you know, I was always raised that, you know, just learn new things about people and don't think anything of it. And we just never thought anything of it. Like, you know, oh, that's cool. Tell me about this. And then you learn something new. I'm like, okay, well, let's be friends now. Okay. And stuff like that. So it doesn't – I don't understand it. Like I don't understand why there's so much division now because the gen used to be. Uh, I think I it's being stoked. It. I think it's being stoked. I think that – Oh, 100% I think it's being we're... stoked because it, when we were kids, it was like, oh, I'm this. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm not Christian. I'm you know Jewish or a Muslim or whatever. So, okay. Well, so, you know. I, I like, did – yeah. I, I never really thought anything of it. I did another uh, video earlier today, which probably is going to go up after this one, though, talking about Ernie Hudson. He's talking about Ghostbusters and people were trying to say it was racist that Winston didn't have a big role. But he said the only reason Winston didn't have a big role is Winston was supposed to be Eddie Murphy. And he's like, if it was Eddie Murphy, he would have been like the headliner and making uh -huh. the most money. Cause, oh, no, that never happened because, remember, diversity only began like 10 years ago. Yeah, right? Uh, yeah, and I hate to break it to people. But in the 80s and 90s, some of the biggest movie stars out there were black folks. Mm -hmm. I, I hate to break it to you. Mm -hmm. You didn't invent it. But yeah, it's like mm -hmm. we've reset the clock back to 1955 all of a sudden and everybody's acting like – It's just insane. And I'm, like we, I'm with him on what he said about, you know, it, you feel bad because they feel like – I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Even the pictures they had of her were sitting there with Will Wheaton because he's so, he's so diverse. He's so diverse um, too, yeah. But look, you know, you kind of just – oh, yeah, I have this one. I remember that, yeah. yeah. Tell the, You better go to the marketing team and you terrify them and threaten them with terrify anger and them, cancel culture. Threaten them. I'm I mean, like, if you have on. to win by terrifying people, then you're not winning. Like this is just <sighs> so stupid. Look, let the market decide. Let the market decide. Yeah, no problem. Easy peasy. This is where they're going to get pissed off because they're not going to have the media to uh, force consumers or push consumers or push studios in a certain direction. I think that the studios now, a lot of them are wising up that they've been hoodwinked. And a lot of them are, you look at it and it's like older white dudes that have been, and they're like, well, I don't want to be a bigot. And these kids must know what they're talking about. But you know so. what gets me? Okay, here's what gets me. If it's an independent studio and you only want to hire people that aren't white, that's up to you. You know, cool. You do you. But if you're in any other studio, okay, if it, was, if it was still an independent studio and they said, I only hire white people, what would happen? If they would say, all my characters are white in my game, what would happen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You'd be told that you have to have diversity. You have to have diversity. Yeah. But it doesn't work both ways. And that's where it's bullshit. You know what? If you're going to demand diversity, then you better deliver, you know, the whole spectrum of diversity yourself. And that's what gets me. I'm like, I don't care if you have any independent company and you don't want to hire white people. That's your choice. If you have an independent company and you want to hire all white people, that's your choice. I think it's wrong that you're, you go around dictating who could be hired, who, you know, what your character should and shouldn't be threatening marketing people, that kind of stuff. Cause you know, that's just racism and bullshit and it's bigotry. It's, just, it's bigotry itself. It's like, if you, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So if you don't like, if you don't want to have to hire white people, then you can't tell anybody else they have to hire diverse people. Yeah, pretty much. You know, yeah, you just, can't demand it in the games if you yourself are putting games and laughing about how you have no white people in it. You know what I mean? Just, it's just you, it's all it's, what rules for thee and not for me aren't going to work. Hire the people most qualified for the job and hire people that you can work with. And some people get along better than other people. You and know? that's and I mean, and yeah, but I mean, don't you can't you can't do one thing by demand everybody else does something else. And, yeah. if, and if somebody can't have a list about what games, a curated list about what games a company they don't like worked on, then you can't have lists about who, you, what gamers you should eliminate. God, this is you this know? is not going to go the way they think. No, and, I mean, call you vote with your wallet and then pay that's, companies that's what's that happen. you know have games you want to play and have you know people they hire that you you agree with or you know characters that you like. They Just want, do that. 
I can't believe they want to purge. Purge I, I, gamers. That's what I'm saying. How are you supposed Pur- to do that? Go around and shoot people? I mean, I'm trying to figure this out. LOL in the game, silly. I wasn't talking about real life, even though we've got some of them saying that, you know. Well, you know, it's really easy to purge this. You just don't buy threaten it. Threaten them, terrify them, purge them. Like, come the fuck on. Or just make a game people want to play and then shut the fuck up about everything else. You yeah, know? Two years ago, I don't think this would be even an issue. People no. would be like, this is stupid. Just vote with your wallet. That's how you purge. Yeah, that's how, and it will it will uh, correct itself. The market will mm-hmm. correct itself. It'll be Darwinism, economic Darwinism. See, I went to the academic decathlon for economics. It'll just it'll work out. We're gonna wrap this up. Yes, I can't believe every day there's something else. I'm like, what All the right. hell? I can't even. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later. Bye.